I think w when I was when I was very young, I mean like nine to like thirteen, fourteen. Um, m there, my reading was just I, I think as it should be completely wild and undisciplined, and it was like Vonnegut followed by Shakespeare, followed by Alice Walker, followed by um, C.S. Lewis or something, you know, um, and. Uh, and, and with, a com with complete disregard to the I notions of high low, um, and and certainly without much regard for for time periods, um, and um, and I miss that kind of reading. You know, it's 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 reading without prejudice. It's reading without you know snobbery, um, and it's um, and I and I and I would also throw books down without feeling bad about it. You know, a book is boring. You know, throw it away, not throw it away, but put it aside. And and I think that's that's a there's nothing wrong with reading that way. I think sometimes in the academy we talk about that as if that were a lower form of reading, you know. And the fact is, it's 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 a perfectly legitimate form of reading. It's just that what's entertaining for some people might not be entertaining for others. That doesn't mean that you know that you know the snobbiest, most erudite reader isn't reading for entertainment. It's just that their definition of entertainment might be different than than someone who reads uh, you know romance novels or you know wizard books or whatever. But you're still reading for entertainment. You're still reading because it's pleasurable. Right, and and I and I do think that um, when I was a kid, there was you know I was unabashedly reading for for pleasure, uh, reading for entertainment, reading because I liked it, and um, and I also want people to read my books because they like them, not because they're being forced to read them. Give me an example from your own your own uh, your own reading of, of how it's uh, kind of undisciplined. Well, um, I I. Uh, I think that there, there's a, there's, you know, the Victorian novel is something I know almost nothing about. Um, I think uh, I, I have often read authors, and I, and I say this, this is not something I'm proud of, but I often read authors um, as if the book were, you know, were, had been found in an archaeological dig and were unable to discern the context or the language it was written in, and we don't know if it's about a made-up country or a real place, you know. So reading, um, you know, Tolstoy or Chekhov without any historical context at all, you know. So reading War and Peace, you know, and not really could stopping to consider whether these wars actually happened, you know, or you know, and and, and that's not something that's necessarily a, a good thing. It's just a, a, the the purest. Uh, uh, it's the the the, the pur purity of, of ignorance, basically, um, and, uh, and 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 it's just the way that that I've kind of stumbled into this. I mean, I've, I have gone back now, sort of, with a little bit more more knowledge and a little bit more discernment, and tried to contextualize some of my readings, um, but but certainly I, I, there, there was there was you know a lot of my, my my first 25 years of reading was a lot about reading just for story. You know, and and not being overly concerned with you know with whether you know the radiance of the king was you know part of some you know post-colonial African type of literature or if it was just a great story. Yeah, my my new novel is called At Night We Walk in Circles. Um, it uh, it's about a young man named Nelson. Nelson's kind of uh, drifting through his early adulthood. He gets the opportunity to try out for a, the revival of a play by his hero, his kind of artistic, literary, dramatic hero, um, Henry Nunez. Um, and it's a play, a revival of a play that, that was first produced 15 years earlier and was very controversial, a play called The Idiot President. So he joins a revival of The Idiot President and goes off into the countryside. They run into Henry Nunez's troubled past. Um, and uh, the person most affected by it that collision is is Nelson. You know, I spent seven years or so working on this book. This is a remarkably inefficient uh, process, but um, it was, and I think remains, uh, important for me to, to have told this story. I'm, I'm proud of the fact that the novel was even finished because so many times during the process of writing it, I wanted to, wanted to quit. Um, but you do fall in love with the story, and you fall in love with the characters, and you fall in love with the world that your novel, um, uh, I guess, uh, describes or amplifies. And uh, and that certainly happened in my case. Um, Nelson is a, a, 
character I have a lot of sympathy for and a lot of connection to, I think, because, um, I mean, I think his dilemma is, is one that, that I've felt, you know, where um, there, there is a part of your life or a stage in your life where you know that important things are about to happen, but you can't really figure out what they are. And you know that um, the, the decisions you're making now might be very weighty, but you, there's no way you can foresee the consequences. Um, and there's something that you only, you know, you, you're only dimly aware of at a certain point and then becomes very, very clear to you later. Um, so Henry's at, I mean, not Henry, Nelson is at that stage.